That means when I solve it here, now if I solve this, if I solve this correctly, what I'm going to get is is a, a um, let's let's go through a couple steps. I have alpha squared over over two. A is going to be greater or equal to natural log of 2 over delta. And we're going to make K less than or equal to um, I'm going to get K greater or equal to something, which is, is not going to work out. Right? So I'm not going to be able to get a bound like this. Well, what I can do instead is I can set my alpha so it's larger. So I can say, if I want the sum to be alpha k just on the right side, right, to be, what I can do is set alpha to be, set alpha to be epsilon k, right, that I have a k squared, and, and then again, I can get, I can get this bound that k is going to be greater or equal than 1 over epsilon squared um, natural log 2 over delta. But what I had to do was said probably the sum is greater than epsilon times k. Right? So I'm saying, so I'm not able to set this to be something very small. This is going to have to grow, um, this wp is going to have to grow with k. The number of trials I get, this bound is going to keep growing. The, the, the deviation, the absolute deviation from the, from the mean is going to grow as the number of trials does. But the average deviation is, is not going to grow. Okay. Um, I guess I just have a couple minutes left now. So what else do I want to say before I let you guys go? Um, so, okay, there's, there's one more thing I wanted to say. Um, is that I looked at just one of these bins. So I looked at just this bin FI, right? This just the i bin. But I want this to be true for all of the bins. Right? Um, so how do I get this to be true for all of the bins at once? So I'm gonna use this. I, I'm gonna again leverage this probably approximately correct framework here. Um, So I'm, I'm going to use something called the union bound. Let me just write this up quickly. I and mean, it's going to say that if I have, um, so um, if, if I have events x1 through x, um, xk, um, and, and each um, so the probability that xi equals true equals 1 minus delta, then the probability that all xi true is going to be equal to 1 minus k times delta, or is, is greater than equal to 1 minus k times delta. So the way you think about it is you have a delta probability of failure, and if the probability that they're all true is greater than one minus the probability that um, that that none of them fail, or the probability that any of them fail, you can just add together those probabilities. So it's a pretty it's a pretty dumb bound, but you need you can have all sorts of dependence between them. You don't need them to be independent. This one really needed the independence here. Um, and you actually, um, you at least only need pairwise dependence here. But, but here, you don't need any sort of dependence. Um, now, if delta is like 1 half, this, this doesn't make sense. Right? But if delta is small, you, you can 
combine these together this way. Um, and so what you say is that you set the probability of failure of one of these spins to be delta prime over n, and then you, you change the delta to be uh, delta, and you get some bound where you get a, a log n over delta. You can combine together n of these events by you know, dividing through the delta by the number of events. And then you still get, you still only get delta error. Um, it turns out that you don't actually need um, this n in, 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 in this setting, or even if you have these, these nice categories, these intervals instead of the things. You don't actually need this n term here. Um, but getting, getting rid of the n term is pretty common. Um, um, yeah, so that's all I'm going to say. So, hope you got the intuition. You apply a bunch of simple estimators and combine them together, and it really kind of it, it amplifies um, how close you are to the mean. Um, and we'll use this a bunch of times over the semester. So, there's no class on Monday because it's a holiday, and then next week, Wednesday, um, we'll uh, we'll start looking at actual algorithms, and we'll start looking at converting kind of abstract data into a data type that we can actually work with and start to answer.